I wonder if there will be like a through line with all of these. I'm sure they will, but of these shows basically having toys back them up you know what i mean mm. yes like the street sharks i had street sharks as well and, and obviously gargoyles it's, and masks it's the it's the uh, uh the arms uh coming together it's like <laughs> yeah. yes. cartoon, cartoon toys toy release money <laughs> money <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to a special edition of the Confused Breakfast Podcast. Normally, we choose a classic movie from the 80s, 90s, or early 2000s and dissect it with a modern eye to see if it still moves us the way it did as kids. But not today. On this episode, we are going to discuss some serious nostalgia shit here, guys. We think you're going to love it. Sit back. Enjoy today's episode. Top five animated TV shows. Mm -hmm. Well, damn dang it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for another nostalgic journey to the past with the Confused Breakfast. Sit back, relax, and enjoy wherever you are in the world. Take it away, boys. Well, we are pretty darn excited about today's episode. We'll explain to you how this came about shortly. But first, it's time to introduce the team. My name is Mike Schulte. Joining me as always, two dudes that still watch cartoons, even though they're super old. Sean Pryor and AJ Vance, how the heck are you? Goddamn right I do. Yep. I own, I own, I own some seasons of these. Owens. 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 Seasons. I have a perfect excuse with having a, a child. Come yeah. on, yeah. So, I'm, I'm jealous. Uh, uh, you're watching like anime being like, yeah, it's cartoons for my it's kid. Like, what do you... <laughs> my wife will watch in, 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 walk in and be like, are you watching cartoons? Oh, me and Harrison are watching cartoons. Uh, excuse me? I'm Hello. trying to get this child in education. Sorry. Weird. Yeah. Well, for the record, we did have a debate about what to call this. Because <laughs> uh, like in my head, it's just I would call it cartoons, right? Like I would just call anything yeah. on these list cartoons. But I think in... In technicality, like producer Craig said, that like animated animated television show covers just the entire broad spectrum of everything we're about to talk about. Right. So yeah. I I was arguing that oh, we're probably gonna do an anime episode and, and Mike was like, I've never seen one more one anime in my life. I've I not seen I've, one second of one single anime episode. I've never seen an anime. Yeah. So maybe now's the time to announce that you guys are uh, branching off and doing a brand new show called <laughs> animated, anime. animated Hot Sauce. It's called What's a Anime? <laughs> what's called What's Anime? <laughs> what's a, What's a Anime? <laughs> what you eating there? Or what you watching there, sport? Uh, you, anime. Uh, anime. Anime. <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, the reason we are able to do these monthly uh, Monday bonus episodes is because of the support of our Patreon members. We have an incredible incredible community of people that are supporting us and directly sponsoring this podcast. And you can do that, too. If you want to help get us to have more, more, more content, that is the way. You go to patreon.com slash confused breakfast. You sign up. You get to directly port the show. You get bonus weekly audio. You get to vote on upcoming episodes. It is an incredible place to be. You should check it out. One of the new perks that we do monthly is that those Patreon members get to actually give their modern day ratings of the movies we've done. So the last couple that have come out, uh, we had Airborne. Mm -hmm. As a group, we collectively gave Airborne a 6.47. Patreon members thought it was higher. They said 7.43. Wow. They're wow. pushing that full up. Step, huh? They're they're almost a full, a full number step up from where we were. So... Uh, Sorry, apologies. Wow. Raiders of, of Lost Ark, uh, we gave it an 8.54. They gave it an 8.3. That's pretty darn close. Mm, yeah. But a little lower than where, where we were. And actually, funny enough, uh, we gave Back to the Future 2 an 8.53, .01 less than Raiders of Lost Ark. And uh, BTTF, our Patreon members gave it an 8.38. So again, they were slightly lower than we were mm. on that. But uh, I think that's pretty close. I feel like we're right on on that one. Airborne, maybe we're a little off. Yeah, maybe. Fair enough. Feels right, huh? I like no. it. That's why they're the best. So go check that out. Patreon.com slash Confused Breakfast. The whole reason we're here today. So let's jump in. Topic today, top five animated TV shows. Uh, were cartoons a big part of your life from day one? Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, I, uh, I just remember, like, 
it's it's kind of cliche, but like after school cartoons is what they're called. Huge Saturday morning. Saturday cartoons. morning. Yes. Yeah. I, that's what I would do uh, when I came home from school. I watch Are You Afraid of the Dark and then do that's cartoons. Not a cartoon. After After Are You Afraid of the Dark, I would do cartoons and on Saturday mornings <laughs> watch these cartoons. Um, yeah, big deal, big deal for me and my brother. It was it was funny because like every kid show back then too it didn't have to be so educational. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? You. It was just like it's like oh this is a cartoon and it's funny and they make a fart noise so it's like cool. <laughs> yeah. They're entertained. For me I feel like it's sort of like that random person you know that's like no I don't listen to music. Yeah. What? You're like, it's sort of like if you yeah, yeah, there's there's like random people out there <laughs> like no I don't do that. Uh, My brother. I'm like, seriously I'm astonished. I'm like you you actively Stray away from you seek music. silence. This beautiful medium is out there for you to consume, to to shape who you are, to create memories inside of you, and make you feel things. And you choose not to do it. I don't, it hasn't done anything for me. But it's yes. it's the, in the same aspect of there's only a few people that don't listen to music. There's only a few kids that you knew that didn't watch cartoons. Yeah. I mean, cartoons were like a universal language for for kids, and I think. I think that just sort of continued on into life, you know, like because like it's just such a great way to turn things off and just watch something. They can be a lot more, uh, you know, um, crazy with what happens because because right. because it is a drawing, it is a rendering kind of a thing. And I think that's why they're still wildly popular today for adults and kids. I'm Absolutely. sure it probably won't be on our list since we've done a whole breakdown on it. But South Park, I remember like even in elementary, like watching that show and then going to lunch at school and me and my friends would talk about Same. it and like do jokes from Same. it you know it's it's that uh that communal yep so let's start off i mean i do have a couple honorable mentions here do you guys have some i got a plenty I got okay a lot. I'll, I'll give you a few uh for me uh duck duck Tales was always one of my favorite cartoons i know that that's a little bit further back and i know they stopped probably maybe before you started watching cartoons uh, the, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon was yeah. fantastic. I was a big Rugrats fan. Same. I, I yeah. fell out of Rugrats uh, more into the adult content of Nickelodeon, but Rugrats was one of the first shows I remember watching on Nickelodeon being like, tight. It was one yeah. of those shows where my, I would watch it and, and my, my mom would get into it now yeah. too, and she loved it. It was, it was more of a family everybody. thing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, actually, I don't know if you remember the Magic School Bus cartoon. Fuck yeah. That was dope because the books were so incredible and just completely enthralled me. But then they actually, it's that rare moment where they can take a book or a comic book and then actually do better. Right. And I feel like the cartoon actually did that. That like vivid memories burned into my 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 mind of like what happened in those episodes. And the cartoon you could watch in school. Oh, That's yes. what we did. Yes. Uh, and the last one I had on my list, Tailspin. Remember Tailspin? Anybody watch that one? A little bit. Yeah, it was that, again. Bit. That's more in the Ducktales yeah. vein. A little bit before you guys, but those were five that uh, did not make my top five list. Gotcha. I'll hit it. Um, I got Ed, Ed and Eddie on a runner up. Um, love that show. Used to like just do like play those characters every time we went to school. Um, Cowboy Bebop is more of an anime. I love that show so much. Uh, I'm gonna go C Lab 2020. This is a lot of like Adult Swim kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, C Lab 2020, Dexter's Lab. I love Powerpuff Girls. Arthur was a huge yeah. thing. Mm. Arthur. Uh, their 9/11 episode Ooh. is like literally heart wrenching and and very very uh, poignant. Like it's like a masterful episode. Mm. Um, Space Ghost Coast to Coast. Oh. Rugrats. Captain Planet. Yeah. Was huge. Doug. Hey Arnold, Animaniacs, Johnny Bravo, and all real monsters. Nice, dude. Yeah. Um, like I say, I got a, I got a lot of them. Um, X Men was one that was just the X Men animated series. Uh, was huge. Um, I there Darkwing Duck. Yeah, mm -hmm. dude. Um, was great. I but like it was one of those that was elusive to me. I could have almost never catch it. It almost feels like a fever um, dream that that didn't exist. I know. I know. One hundred percent. I know it existed, but did it? I can't uh, remember it. Uh, Captain Planet yep. was one. Uh, Angry Beavers. Oh, yeah. Do you guys remember Angry Beavers? Angry Birds. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. What's that? Angry Birds? Ang uh, no. Same thing. No, <laughs> it's basically it. the same thing. Um, then, then, that, then I had that big run of like Cartoon Network, which is like Dexter's Lab. Yep. And uh, Samurai Jack. Mm -hmm. Big Samurai Jack fan. And uh, Powerpuff Girls. Cool. Did you guys ever watch Powerpuff Girls? I love Powerpuff Girls. It was a great show. Um, my last one, which I thought was going to make the cut, 
because I distinctly remember being very upset every single morning that I didn't wake up early enough to watch it was Pokemon. Yeah. The Pokes. I, I was pissed every time. The Pokes. I was so mad every time I was like just up. It wasn't up early enough at like 630 to watch the show. I was yeah. so pissed. It's Pokemon. Well, let's dive into this. So we do have an executive producer today, David Gould, nice. my friend David. He is going to be here. He's going to give us a top five as well. Let's start David off. How about that? Right. Let's do his number five. He is going Tiny Toon Adventures. Nice. He says, as discussed in the Who Frame Roger Rabbit episode, I love and idolize the Looney Tunes. The bright colors, quirky characters unlocked endless hours of joy and satisfied my hidden bloodlust. <laughs> so I can easily <laughs> add 90s classic Tiny Toons adventures to my list. Babs, Buster, Plucky Duck were just the right age to link up with my younger sensibilities while tapping into that Looney Tunes magic. With Paul Denny's uh, masterful writing, you never knew what hijinks would ensue or what characters would pop in, and I loved every minute of it. That's a good one. That is a really yeah. good one. Yeah, very solid. Solid. Uh, who wants to hit number five? I can go. Do, Do it, it. Um, So this is my number five, a little bit of an interesting one. Doubt it would hold up anymore these days, but I had a lot of action I had a couple action figures from it. Street Sharks. Nice. Ooh. Street Sharks was... Basically the same animation style as like the old as like Spider Man and and uh even some of like the Batman and stuff. I I think you can still find it on like Peacock right now if you guys are interested. But Street Sharks was awesome. I just thought it was I thought it was so cool. Oh, they're action action <laughs> sharks and one of them roller skates and then they got motorcycles and <laughs> they're just like Which again is why you just said why cartoons are so cool is because it's like you it's can do obnoxious anything. literally you can who do cares <laughs> and it, it's we just silly. kept on talking about Waterworld like this that makes no sense but yeah. it's cartoon you're like oh of course that <laughs> makes no sense yeah, no, I like it's fucking awesome zero sense so I'm gonna watch it <laughs> I'm like I say, I, I'm sure a lot of these that uh, or there's a lot of cartoons that if you watch them now as like an adult, you're like, yeah, it probably wouldn't hold up. I'm sure this is one of them. But back then, absolutely enthralled. Yeah. And I remember I remember having um, a streaks, uh, the roller skating one action figure. Nice. Uh, the tiger shark one. I was like, yeah, oh, yeah, street, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You just mash them together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There it is. All right. Street Sharks. Number five. That was my number five. Sean, you want to do five? Hell yeah. Let's do it. I am going to go. This show, just picture young little Sean. Okay. Okay. Trench coat. Trench coat. Trench coat and tail. Um, I had, I tipped over my, you know, those like little tykes, like two step ladder into yep. the slide. Yep. The old blue stairs, yep. uh, yeah. orange slide. Exactly. Right, right. Had that tipped over and I was like inside of yep. like where the stairs meet the, the slide. That was my back car. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. I was in there, and that's how I watched all of my cartoons. That was like my spot, and I had like my my Batman toys with me and my Terminator toys, and I would just watch cartoons. And I remember vividly watching Gargoyles. I love Gargoyles. Fucking love Gargoyles. Uh, fucking Keith David. Yeah. I'm just I'm just gonna say it. That he that this is a Jared layoff thing. Like we're, he's this is in, included. Oh, like, you you want this in there? He yeah. Be Keith in there, David huh? arrives again. Um, the voice of Goliath. I remember I had all of these action figures um, and it's just like the concept of it is very like kind of dark and mysterious. And I think that's cool. I just, I just like the, the conceit of these stone uh, gargoyles <clears throat> watching over the city, literally coming to life and watching over the city and fighting crime and stuff. It's very Batman. esque. Very too, much. Yeah. And maybe come up later. Oh, uh, huh. I, I love this show. And I, and I think Keith David as Goliath is like one of the best voice performances. Oh ever. yeah. I agree. I love it. My number five, I think I've brought this up before and I definitely know you guys don't know it cause it's so, it's so ahead of your time, but uh, I'm, I'm going mask. No, I'm not talking Jim Carrey mask. I'm talking M.A.S.K, which stands for Mobile Armored Strike Command with a K. Uh, it's it's literally like it's G.I. Joe meets Transformers, and it's animated. It was, for, it was an 85 to 86. I mean, it was very short-lived, but this, this cartoon combined with the toy line that they had... Mm was the sickest thing that I'd ever it's like one of my earliest memories. So they're basically people that that are 
not special people, but they go and they get this helmet put on them, and then they become like powerful. Then they get in their vehicles that transform, and they fight this what mythical kind of special people. You talk, to <laughs> well, you know what I mean? <laughs> they they did seventy five <laughs> syndicated episodes. Uh, this this show, if you know if you know what I'm talking about, and you had the toy lines when you were young, like I was, it's it's just like nostalgic bomb overload mental image for me to to see one of those toys just be like oh. I mean, it's like one of my earliest memories of, is watching these cartoons. Literally, never and playing heard these of it. toys. Yeah, it sounds dope. It sounds like I wonder. Like you can, okay. So click on it. You can watch it on YouTube. Like episode one, just uh-huh. click on it. The theme song is out of this fucking world. It's like the best <laughs> '80s song you've ever heard in your entire life. I wonder if there will be like a through line with all of these. I'm sure they will. But of these shows, basically having toys back them up you know what i mean mm. yes like the street sharks i had street sharks as well and, and obviously gargoyles it's, and masks it's the it's the uh, uh the arms uh coming together it's like <laughs> yes. cartoon, cartoon toys toy release money <laughs> money <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's exact- Mom, will you buy me this? It's, That's yes. what it is in the middle. It's literally exactly what this was. <laughs> Mask. M- M.A.S.K. And if you have a team of characters in your show, you have multiple chances. You got to buy oh, yeah. them all. You have to. <laughs> I need the whole team, Mom. They're useless by themselves. <laughs> yep. <laughs> all right, so we got to go to David Gould's number four. Uh, he's going, ah, real monsters. Nice. That's a great choice. He says, there are certain shows you love, but you have no idea why. There are certain <laughs> shows you loved as a kid, but if you watch it again as an adult, you you know it would fall flat. There are certain shows you watched as a kid just because it grossed your man out. <laughs> grossed your man Our out. Real Monsters was that show for me. The Tim Burton-inspired characters, the wacky voices, and the overall grossness of this show sp- uh, spoke directly to my boyish heart. I swear I could smell crumb right through the TV screen. <laughs> and honestly, the Grobel is a Grobel pull. Yeah, yeah the Grobel. Grumble. Grumble. I think uh, there's a spell okay. there. Pulled, pulled off those red high heels. Ah, Real Monster sits perfectly as a relic of the past and a show that most may have forgotten, but I remember it fondly, and that's why it deserves a place on my list at number four. Nice. I think that's a great that's a great pick. Yeah. And honestly, the fact that the fact that he was called Crumb and just looked like ball sack <laughs> is really funny. Yeah. It is. <laughs> ah, Real Hold, Monster uh, holding his eyes. Yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> his that's arms got night. tired. Even if you didn't see that show, you know that character. Oh yeah. Like everyone's seen that character. And oh, like yeah. talking about Tim Burton inspired, like that literally that cane looking one. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I like, can't remember her name. But yeah, she had like uh, the red Melina lips. or something. Or, yeah. Yeah. The, just black and white, straight up. Yep. Tim Burton. It's horrifying. Yep. Oh, AJ yeah. got four. I got a four. Um, yeah, I got a four. Man. I got a four. Yeah, I got a four. <laughs> yeah, I got a rash, man. I got a rash. Uh, I I got a Futurama. Nice. Ooh, Futurama. And okay, so this is the reason why I maybe made somewhat of a case to be like, I think it should be animated TV shows because I have a tough time calling like TV shows that are like for adults, but I, cartoons. I, but I feel like I call it a cartoon. See, I don't know. I, I call it animated TV because it was okay. on like Fox okay. late night. But like Mask was that's a cartoon. It's a cartoon. But like Futurama definitely. Street right. Sharks is a cartoon. But Futurama is a little different. Right. It okay. just felt a little different for me. And okay. I, I, there's some other ones maybe that will come up. Who knows? Um, but yeah, Futurama. And this is still going like on and off. Um as just a great show for me. I feel like it's where all of Matt Groening's uh, good ideas have gone to anymore is Futurama. And I think the characters are hilarious when I first started seeing them and just like they, they're, they're swearing and like all that stuff. When I was younger, that was very, very funny to me. And like, it was like Fox animated, um, uh, what do they say? Like a- animated Saturdays or animation Saturdays or whatever. Animation it was. Saturday. It's like something like that. And they had like Futurama, Simpsons, all these other ones yep. on. And Futurama was always my favorite. Yep. And uh, by the time it was all said and done. So yeah, man, Futurama was so good. I love that. Some of them episodes are like crazy, like the concept of them too. Oh, yeah. I, want, I remember the one where Bender gets lost in space and he's got like an asteroid hits him, but it's like a small little colony of people right. on him. And he's like the god he's of them. He's playing god. Yeah. <laughs> It's crazy. It's, it's it's very very well thought out. It's like yeah. pre Rick and Morty. You Dude, know? It, it was the avenue for Rick and Morty to oh, move yeah. in that direction, right? Oh God, yes, one hundred percent. 
Um, no, like I, I really think it was very, very well thought out, very thoughtful. And every time you thought it was going to be something stupid, they made a very smart comment cool. about it. Yep. So, yeah. Good one, man. Well, this one like extremely informed me of, uh, I think, my early horror love, I have to say. Um, and that's Courage the Cowardly Dog. I oh, man. loved this show. I still do. I, I, it's, it's just like the ideas and the creatures involved in it and um, the, the, like the voice work of like Eustace uh, and Muriel and obviously Courage are like so ingrained in me. Like I'll just find myself around the house doing right. those voices for no reason. Like, here's this bang! You yeah. know? Or, uh, 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 of courage. <laughs> um, I, I just, I loved it. it was, it's, it's, it's like a monster of the week kind of thing, like Scooby-Doo, which might come up later. Um, it's a monster of the week kind of thing, and I loved, like, that kind of serial. Like, you got every, you, every week or whatever, how, I don't even know how it aired. Speaking of, we weren't like, I guess we just knew it was Saturdays. Like, now we're, like, in HBO shows... Like, oh, we have to wait a week for the next Game of Thrones episode. That one was never on my mind as a kid while watching these shows. Just it was like, just they were just on. They're just on. But, but there was never a with with those type of a show with kids shows. There was never a week. It was never a, a week to week thing. Like right. like Stranger Things, you have to watch one through eight. You yeah, know, like yeah. you never watch them in order. No. You just watch whatever was playing, and you're like, cool. You know, like there was never a chronological order to these things. Yeah, a lot of the time. So you just showed up and went, cool, what's on? Oh, that show's on. I think the first time that that really happened for kids was probably like SNCC. You know, um, sure. Which was which was the like late nights or the Saturday night Nick- yeah. Nickelodeon. Yeah. And I feel like that was the first time it really happened. But for cartoons, it was like it was syndicated throughout yep. the week. Right. So it was yeah. like whatever. Yeah, it was like maybe I saw like this the one episode like Return the Slab of Courage's Carly Dog and like the it was just on again the next day, you know. <laughs> um, but I loved it, and that's one of my favorite episodes. Speaking of that, is the Return the Slab guy super creepy. Um, yeah, just love the vibe of it. Love that it was just it, out in the middle of nowhere. It's just yeah. them, and they they all get every creepy monster you could ever genuinely think of. funny, but genuinely creepy at yeah. times. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my number four, I got to go Beavis and Butthead. And I have a weird relationship with this show because I remember when it came out. This came out in 93. The main the main seasons of that was 93 to 97, culminating with the movie uh, Beavis and okay. Butthead Do America, which we definitely will, will cover on this show. But I remember really not liking this show. I didn't. I was among the, I don't get it. You know, like, yeah. I don't understand. It's dumb. Same. Right? But, like, as I continued to to kind of consume it, it grew on me, and something about that show, something about the drawing, the drawings, the way it looks is like a fucking warm blanket to me. Okay. The, the, the way that the sounds, the way Mike Judge designed that show, is it's like pure and utter genius. And, and think about the couch-watching MTV moments of that show introduced me to some of the best bands mm-hmm. in the history of the world that I maybe would have never heard about at that time if it wasn't for them, like... Either yeah. making fun of them or yeah. or being like this fucking rolls, you know. Yeah. Like, the chicks that, got tits. Ah, yeah, fucking fire, fire. <laughs> I, I think uh, I think Beavis and Butthead is one of the most uh, like underrated car- animated shows of all time, and and obviously at at its time it was MTV's highest rated show when mm-hmm. it came out. I mean, Crazy. it was it was a gigantic movement, and I I I love the show, and I still go back a lot of times and just go ah, yeah. <laughs> even that intro music, it just. I don't know, something about it. Something about Mike Judge's renderings and how he yeah. draws things. Mm. Like a, a dumpster in, in a in the parking lot with like juice coming out the bottom of it. You know, like like he just makes that you can feel it yeah. in yeah. his drawings. I don't know. I, I love Mike <laughs> I, Judge. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's uh, the most the episode that sticks with me the most is the one that it's like about nachos. Do you remember this one Probably. at all? I mean it basically I think like they're eating nachos or or something, and then and then Butthead just starts choking and choking oh, on this, yeah. and Beavis has to go on this excursion to figure out a way to like get yep. him to stop choking. <laughs> yep, and he's just going around the town and just be like, <laughs> <laughs> he's just just finding other things, and then he'll, every now and again he'll randomly cut back to Butthead. He's just like. <laughs> he's just getting bluer and bluer yeah it's stupid shit it's but you're so just dumb like, but I it's get so what great saying yeah yeah, yeah. Um, i'm silly. gonna say jared layoff thing again like they were an airhead so second time on there the you show. go all right Boom. 
So we'll move on to number three. We got to hit David Gould's number three. This is a great one. I was so excited he put this on his list. Ren and Stimpy. Okay. Yes. Got to. Talking about a show that would gross my mother out, Ren and Stimpy was a show that pushed the limits so far that I was forbidden to watch it. Luckily, late at night when my older brother DR and I, were, and I were watching TV, he would want to watch Ren and Stimpy. And being a little bit older than me, it was okay. It was dark, absurd, and towed the line of kid entertainment so close you could watch it on Nickelodeon and MTV. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Oh, yeah. That's intense. That's so crazy. I have some memories of Ren, Stimpy, Powder Toast Man, and other loud red and veiny characters. <laughs> but what I remember <laughs> most of all is sitting with my brother in a dark living room on a Friday night and basking in the glow of a tube TV laughing at the absurdity. That memory alone is why I hold Ren and Stimpy so high on my list. Beautiful. I think Ren and Stimpy is very similar to Beavis and Butthead in the fact that mm -hmm. sometimes it takes a while. It takes a while to get into that. Oh, yeah. To fully understand what was happening, it's there. a weird vibe, man. And like that, I I love these shows too. Like Courage does this sometimes too, where it's just like they'll cut to like a even more crude, <laughs> like just still of of like Ren, but he looks so much different. Like he's like his eyes popping out, like the that. hardcore, yeah, like the the high res. Like it's that's something that SpongeBob stole exactly. It, eventually, like they took that idea too, and would and would create those high res, mm -hmm. like high definition shots. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember the log. I remember all their theme songs. <laughs> varicose Everybody veins, did. varicose veins, mm -hmm. varicose veins, varicose. <laughs> it's just like so ahead log. Of its, time. it's just log. like it's log. It's log. It's Every more than bad. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad. I wonder if you can. I wonder if that's a streamable somewhere. I would like to dive hope, back into that. Yeah. I hope so. Oh, I mean, oh, 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 shit. Hey, can we? Oh, yeah, number three. Oh, Does it work? Does it work? Do okay. I have a number three, or is it gonna play this? Probably not gonna play that. <sighs> we'll bring it back around. I do have a number three. Um, I'm gonna split these up just a little bit, and I'm gonna go. This is actually this is a little bit out there. I don't know if you guys would know this one at all, but I watched this a lot as a kid, and I had all the action figures and built all the little models, and it's called Gundam Wing. Mm -hmm. Did you ever see Gundam Wing see on like Toonami or Cartoon Network? I watched a show any chance I could get. I loved the movie. We recorded the movie onto a VHS. It's called mm -hmm. Endless Waltz. And like we were just like infatuated with this show. And it basically the show was uh, there are several Gundam shows or whatnot, but Gundam Wing. They are pilots, but they they're big transformers. They look like big transformers. They're big robots. They make a great reference to this in Ready Player One. Um, near the end of it, and I don't think he, he, he's from Gundam Wing or whatever Gundam, but uh, the the guy gets two minutes to be anything he wants mm. to fight the Godzilla thing, and he picks the Gundam. Hell yeah. And that's the big <laughs> reference. So it's really good. It was very dramatic. It was a very, very serious tone it thing was. for a kid to watch, but I think it was kind of the one of the first like drama things I really got into and for series that I really watched that I wanted to watch it in order. And so it, it was every time it would come on, I had to sit down and we had the lights off and watch this like almost like a movie. It was a great show and probably too seriously toned, but I would love to watch it again, honestly. So Hell yeah. yeah, Gundam Wing. Sean, number three. I'm going to go another very informative uh experience and uh very letting me in on my love of horror early in my life and that is scooby-doo thank you where are you uh just again monster of the week kind of thing man and i yeah. loved i loved hanging out with these characters it was like a setup for a slasher movie every episode mm -hmm. and i just i didn't know that i loved that at the time um but watching it as a kid it was just like figuring out this uh this, this mystery really like every episode's a mystery is like oh well this clue this this like hoof it's a hoof but it was a guy or whatever um mr mccullers <laughs> <Per -kinners. laughs> but yeah it was like and then every monster was like uh e either a monster or a guy in a, in a costume like doing this thing yeah and it was just super cool to to see that and then uh, obviously, Scooby and uh, Shaggy's relationship is mm -hmm. like what you want with a dog. Right. You know, you want to hang out, smoke pot, and solve <laughs> mysteries. Who doesn't want um, that, right? Yeah. Just and eat then, crazy yeah. look at good looking come, sandwiches. Come on, man. Yeah. Uh, uh, what What are your guys' experience with Scooby Doo? 
Love love it. I mean, like it's it's a complete and utter warm blanket. Hearing this theme song again, the the visualness of it, like yeah. the way it looks, is just like ingrained in your in your brain because mm-hmm. we've all seen it. We've all seen it every episode a million times. There's like something it was just ab- always on. There's, there's something, something about, about it. it how it's it's extremely timeless. It's yeah. just so timeless. It will it will live on forever. Like everyone will watch it. It's it's all, it's on the list of cartoons that I will start showing Willow when mm-hmm. she gets older. Well, and how many times have you seen them try to do a rendition of this show? Right. They'll bring back some sort of recut or rehash this idea, and a new animation, a new idea, a new theme, nope. new focus, whatever. Right. But it doesn't work it's the not, way it works the same. with old Scooby Doo, man. Not, it doesn't. Not a lot of them, but some of them, like some of the standalone movies. Oh, are sure. Like, that's, yeah, sure. That's fine. But, like, yeah, what it, yeah, the, the other incarnations of like maybe ripoffs of this. Yeah. Like, if, don't Pixar, really do if it Pixar made, like, we're going to make, we're going to do this and we're going to make a series, like, it just wouldn't be, it would look too good. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's so timeless. It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I, I can watch it anytime. I yeah. think that's a that's a good way to say it is that it would look too good, <laughs> right? You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Like yeah. you're, you you tried to polish this up and it didn't need it. Didn't need Just it. We like it, it that way. way. Yeah, it, it's looked like a a still of like a road and a like hidden or like a black castle in yeah. the background, yeah. and it's just like this little cardboard van going. Up I know. There, you know? <laughs> and like I love it. I yeah. love it when they're riding in the van and they're doing that, and it's just like. <laughs> <laughs> hey gang, what do you think's going on over there? Or my favorite, my favorite is absolutely whenever it's like it's like Freddie, especially he'll just be like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> His head just turns like an owl. It's too much animation for him to check the road every time. <laughs> yeah, he just, That's, we can't render that. That's he too turns much. Turns his head a whole one eighty degrees. Just like it's only his head. Hey though. gang. I've been this wearing the same clothes gee, for yeah, five years. Two black dots staring <laughs> yeah. you in the fucking eye. Wow. <laughs> That's a great pick, Sean. Uh, my number three is Doug. It's uh, it's the staple of anything yeah. Nickelodeon related from the 90s for me. There was 117 episodes of Doug from 91 to 98. So if you are a 90s kid, Doug was everything. Right? 100%. I, I, something about that show, like, you know, I, I started off more on the Rugrats train of stuff, but, like, I eventually moved on to the Doug train slightly slightly older. I I think there's something, there's something special about Doug because it was, like, it actually tried to address, like, topics, mm-hmm. which for me I was, agree. like, almost the first time that I had seen that happen. You know what I mean? Like, they, they did, they addressed, like, Platonic and romantic relationships, self-esteem, bullying, rumors, like uh, uh, starting to settle in on like having a crush on someone. Right. So I was like right in that wheelhouse of like, oh, yeah, like what happens? What do you do? Do you kiss? (laughs) What happens when your pants feel tighter? (laughs) I don't know what to do. (laughs) Oh, no. And I mean, like, uh, who was it? Jenkins wrote that. uh, Something Jenkins. Uh, I had it written down. I can't remember. But he, I mean, he based it off of, like, his own childhood, apparently. And, like, a lot of the characters are based off people he knew growing up. And Mm. I just think Doug's, I think Doug's uh, an amazing show, the, the soundtrack. Yeah. (laughs) It's, like, <laughs> it's I mean it's like Seinfeld. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Seinfeld took from that. It had to like the scatting and just did it on a bass. Yeah. If you, if you had the if you had uh the beats it's like, oh. drumming on a chess kid. I like <laughs> that. It was stuff. right around me starting to be like, dude, I you like gotta music. roll your windows down. <laughs> you gotta rock your socks, you gotta roll your soda, bust a vocal cord. <laughs> 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 Immediately oh. going to watch that episode when I get home. <laughs> so stoked. <laughs> yeah. My number three is Duggers. Doug. Dude, it's a great one. And yep. I I'm I'm glad you I'm glad you added that one in because it is. It's like that was a very good transition. Like you're going through a that it's transitional time. You know, it's not as a for kid. babies. It's, it's for, not for it's babies. For kids my age. It's addressing it. Yeah. I will say I had a journal at one point as a as a young young lad, and my brothers definitely made fun of me for writing in it like Doug did. <laughs> <laughs> Dear journal, so and so happened today. I hate my brothers, <laughs> and my brothers suck. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie's been looking at me, and I've been looking at Stephanie. And my pants feel tighter, <laughs> and my pants feel tighter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to number two. So David Gould says Dexter's Laboratory. You bet. 
Although my list might not show it, I was a Cartoon Network kid over Nickelodeon. There was, something, there was just something about the animation and bonkers storylines that tapped right into my adolescent sensibility. Whether Courage the Cowardly Dog, Johnny Bravo, Cow and Chicken, I love them all. But one show stands taller than the rest, Dexter's Laboratory. Reminds me of my favorite 90s cartoons. From the opening theme song to Dee Dee prancing around and Dexter's experiments, it was all perfect. Even the episodes within the episodes of Dial M for Monkey and the Justice Friends were some of my favorites. Dexter's Laboratory gave me laughs, enjoyment, and later in life, a thing for ginger moms and rubber gloves. <laughs> to this day, this show holds true, and admittedly, I have whispered, Omelette du fromage <laughs> in, a lover's, du <laughs> in a lover's ear. Dexter's Laboratory is his number two. Nice. Great pick, man. It's real solid. Yep. You got ginger moms in, in gloves with absolute dump trunk. Ass. Yeah, dude. <laughs> anyway, oh, number two. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, my number two is King of the Hill. Whoa. More Mike Judge. More yeah, Mike same Judge. Same thing, if, right? If, um, if Beavis and Butthead was his EP, King of the Hill... I think was like his full okay. like polished album. Okay. It's very funny. It's very dry. I love the way that it, Mike Judge has a way with comedy that is just it's 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 unmatchable. Like it's you can't recreate it. Um and it, it shines through in all of his shows, but for him to have the driest humor that everyone can get somehow because he put it into a cartoon mm -hmm. like this. I, I don't know. I it's very tough to explain. Um, but to watch, have these little moments between like him and his son, him and his wife that is borderline insufferable, <laughs> you know, it, like his crazy weird neighbors that are his best friends still. And I, I don't know. He's just, I, I think it dives into the, the simple life of like just mundane life and then just elevates it just enough to make it a joke. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's so good having a, Having an issue with your WD-40 can and you can't get the lid off, so you take out a smaller can of WD-40 to <laughs> loosen it up is fucking hilarious. To say to say to somebody, yep, these are medium rare, and then he says, but what if they want them well done? He's like, then we ask them politely yet firmly to leave. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolute comedy gold, man, and I love it so much. King of the Hill is, is honestly a masterpiece of a show. Yeah, It's yeah. like... If the Coen brothers did an animated show. <laughs> I agree with you 100%. Like Nothing happens. But... Specifically, like, from their world of Raising Arizona yep. or, like, even yep. Oh Brother Where Art Thou. It's, it's like if Wes Anderson made a cartoon. Yeah. It's, you're right. Like, awesome. It's in that vein, man. I mean, it's I like, it. I feel like I know that family, like, in real life somewhere. Uh -huh. Like, I've met that family, but I don't know if I actually have or I'm just so ingrained yeah. in King of the Hill or I just feel like I know them, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah, Your dude. number two, Sean? My number two is uh, Samurai Jack. Ooh. Nice. Fucking love Samurai Jack. Um, this I came too. This came kind of a little late for me uh, in my childhood because I was starting to watch Tarantino movies, and I had just seen Kill Bill and was super into that. And I knew, like, I, got, I was getting into, like, sword fighting and, like, samurai stuff. Um, and so I knew that this was a show, and so I checked it out, and I fell in love. I don't know if it's the movie or uh, one of the episodes, but he's Jack's got to fight a bunch of like uh, android bugs. Okay. They're like uh, like an army of them, and he's like cutting them in half, and so like their oil is like kind of blood, and he gets it on his face and stuff, and it's like spraying everywhere. And so I was like, oh my god, this is just like sweet, awesome, cathartic violence. And then Ak Aku as like the main bad guy is so, is so iconic to me just like this black figure with like this crown and like evil looking like almost like uh what's you said it the other night i think the the mask those like japanese masks oh like uh the like kabuki or yeah, like, so yeah. it was like kind of like that it yeah. looks like um but the phil lamar uh, doing the voice of jack is just insane sure it's it's so good it's almost like up there with keith david and, and uh gargoyles um, you know, this guy from, uh, what was he on, SNL or Mad TV or Matt something TV, like that? Phil Lamar Matt was, TV, Phil Lamar was, yeah. He was also in Pulp Fiction. That's right. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, just hearing him, do, it's just so seamless. It's like, it just makes perfect sense. Uh, I love the show, and I uh, can't wait to ch uh, check it out again. Oh, the, yeah. The animation of that show is one of a kind. There's, there's, I don't, I don't, I don't know of anything else that's exactly like it or, or whatnot, and I think a lot of things have 
pulled from it. Mm. But the animation specifically and the way that they kind of skirt that line of too much is is really well done. Yeah. And that's why it was an honorable mention for me. Nice. Yeah. Number two, AJ, you had it on your honorable mentions, X-Men, the animated series. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's never, ever been, nor there ever will be, an action cartoon like this that still also has substance mm. and storyline and, like, emotions. Uh, th this show was on Fox, Fox Kids Network. Remember yes. that block? Jesus, from 92 to 97. X-Men dominated Saturday morning cartoon ratings during that time. Uh, they... I, I was a gigantic X-Men fan. I read the comics. I especially loved Wolverine. When they put this to actual animation, pff, game over for mm -hmm. me. Uh, I still truthfully believe that this was so well done that the X-Men, the animated series, is better than any of the movies they made. Could be right. Thank you. I think it's up there. I think it's <laughs> like, like, super I, well done. You almost get more out of the animated series episodes. There's like... There's like three parters. They're hours long and stuff. Like it's it's deep, deep, deep dive in amazing animated action. Mm -hmm. I, really I love good. it. It's like it's when I think of X Men, I I almost think of this show. Yeah. Even more than comics. Yeah, I do. like movies. Oh yeah. Like that's my canon almost is that world of the X Men. I I agree yeah. with you. It, like it, it's it's that th that's another like animation that i think no one else kind of has the exact same vibe of Agreed. you know what i mean i think yep. it's really good and like there was a point where it was too much for me emotionally oh, yeah. as it's, a kid it's tough <laughs> i was like i don't care that People jean gray is having another headache okay she won't go she won't put out whatever it's like <laughs> whatever jean gray <laughs> whatever oh the love triangle yeah. oh, nobody's getting anything all right too much jubilee get yeah, her off get jubilee time. i don't care about jubilee and her sparklers okay <laughs> i just want to see more rogue she's hot <laughs> it's like and Love that accent. Ooh. Give me more Cyclops. Yeah. For some reason, I associate that show with like uh, being sick. I used to watch. Shit. I used to watch X Men, and then uh, RoboCop made these weird animated movies. They're like short movies. Weird. RoboCop. Weird. Violent Paul Verhoeven. Blood everywhere. RoboCop. Lovely. Anyway. Yeah. That was an honorable mention too. RoboCop. RoboCop. RoboCop the we got it. series. RoboCop. Well, we're moving to number one. David Gould says Batman. Beyond is his number one. Batman Beyond. Which I believe may be linking up with someone else here. Perhaps. Maybe. As I sit here in my home office, aptly, naming the, aptly named The Cave, I am surrounded by my treasures of pure nostalgia. To the right of my desk, you will find a DeLorean painting. To the left, my shoe collection is proudly on display. And just above that, you will find artwork of Keaton's 89 Batmobile. Directly above my desk, a theater marquee hangs frame for the 1966 Batman movie. The Cape Crusader has always been a major part of my adolescence, and to this day, he still is. But there's a Batman interpretation that captured my imagination even over Batman the Animated Series and Justice League. The futuristic styling, stylings of Batman Beyond was a perfect cartoon of its time, answering the question, could there be a Batman if Bruce Wayne was too old to, to hold the mantle? <laughs> Maybe it was the rocket boots and flying cars. Maybe it was Eric Matthews growing up to be Batman and an old and grumpy Kevin Conroy. Or maybe it was the absolute fresh take on the Batman's rogues, rogues gallery. Batman Beyond perfectly melded the Batman we knew and loved and a Batman that could only be, and for that, it will always hold a special place in my heart and imagination. Batman Beyond, number nice. one for David well done. Good job. Do you Very mind good. if I just go, AJ? Go Do for it. it okay. Yeah. Batman the Animated Series is my number one. Oh, yep. yeah. Coming, coming right off of Batman Beyond. I, I didn't really watch that one that much, but I, I remember liking it. But this was such a fucking formative show for me, man. I Batman was literally everything, as I described. I tipped over my fucking slide yep. thing as my Batmobile. I loved it. I have all the toys still. I had, uh, like, so I just want, like, uh, what's his name? The music. Uh, Danny Elfman. Mm -hmm. is That is the score. Like, oh, I yeah. know it's, like, pretty much it the is. 89 Batman. No, no, no. Yes. It is so incredible. Like, even the opening, it likes him jumping across buildings and, like, the silhouette of him in the moon. All of the all of the characters, like the villains and everything, there. I remember one episode where it was like, I think it's called the "We Almost Got Him" episode, uh -huh. and it's like Penguin and uh, Killer Croc, and uh, so, like a lot of the bad guys. Joker, I think, is there. Um, they're just talking about stories of like how they almost got Batman, and they go through like their different like vignettes of stories. And I, it's one of my favorite episodes. The cast: Kevin Conroy, R.I.P. 
fucking Mark Hamill. Come on now. Yep. It's just incredible. And uh, I could, it's like Scooby Doo where I could watch this anytime, any day. And even the movies, man, like the, yep. the Mask of the Phantasm yeah. is an incredible movie. Um, and it's got all the same uh, cast and, and uh, pr- probably people behind the production. But uh, love this show. I uh, can't get enough of it. Yeah. Nice it's, one, dude. It's an iconic show. If it wasn't on yours, it was going to be on mine. <laughs> I will tell you that right now. So, um, my number one is uh, Rocco's Modern Life. Nice. Another iconic opening uh, sequence and theme song. Yeah. Rocco's Modern Life. <laughs> Rocco's Modern Life. Rocco's Modern Life. Like you learn about, I learned what a wallaby was because of this show, yes. guys. You're it's, a, it's obviously very important, yes. right? But there, there was something about this show that was, again, I think I just had a thing for like these cartoons that would kind of just skirt the line, you know, just be a little bit almost offensive, yeah. you know, and and by today's standards could potentially be. But I, I don't know, I don't know what it is about that. Like I, I remember specifically hearing them say like, "Damn." In mm-hmm. this in this cartoon, right, um, and, and it had those aspects of being a little bit gross, but it had the uh, the other aspects that literally made me laugh out loud as a kid. The animation was a little bit choppy, which I loved. I loved that it felt a little a little bit rough, and it it always approached it always approached very like real things, like real very real issues, but very rarely it seemed did. The, the our our hero or like our main character ever really come out on top. Yeah. He never really came out on top. Yeah. You he can kinda, sort of relate to it. He, yeah, he <laughs> kind of came out on top. He got past the issue. Yeah. But very rarely did he ever come out on top. But he was happy with that. Yeah. He was happy with the way things resolved. I like that. And I I don't know. I, I like that a lot about this show. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. My number one, and, and I do want to preface this by saying that I, I don't think we addressed it, but we are talking much in the vein of this show, the eighties, nineties, early two thousands. Yeah. I mean, we're we're so so what I wanna say is that, you know, there there are shows like South Park, Family Guy, Rick and Morty might be my favorite animated television series of all time. We're we're not talking about those, but this my number one is the reason why those three shows exist, and it's the Simpsons. Um, I'm sure. This The Simpsons, in my opinion, is the most important animated cartoon television show of all time. It 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 pushed the boundaries on everything we know, and it's it's the longest. It's it's debuted in 1989, 34 seasons, 750 episodes. Good God, and longest they're still running. going. They're still going now. Now, have I watched a single Simpson episode in the last seven eight years? No. I have not. It's not really my cup of, of tea anymore. At some point, you have to hang it up. You know, like you, you just got to go. You you did your thing. And but I still tip my hat to them for doing, for continuing. But when they were from eighty nine to like ninety nine, this is the smartest telev- smartest cartoon ever. The stuff it gave, the plot lines it gave, the famous writers that have come out of there, mm-hmm. or that guest on like Conan O'Brien. Oh was, my God, I mean, like yeah. the stuff they came up with is so unbelievably memorable and it was the it was the television watching soundtrack of my life every night after school whole yeah. family would watch Simpsons mm. and stuff like that uh and Treehouse of Horror still is my favorite thing yep. come Halloween time I watched there's now like well 34 of them there's 34 <laughs> episodes of Treehouse and Horror and they're so great Simpsons is is my number one and, and it will always be nice yeah yeah I wasn't ever like a huge fan of it but like you there's hard to avoid this yep. show man like and I I when I watch it, it is it is funny, and I I, I relate more to it on the level of uh, what's what's uh, what's <laughs> he's got like, it's like Bart's not friend Millhouse. Yes, <laughs> you're Millhouse. I love him. I love him so much. Everything's coming up Millhouse. <laughs> it looks like everything's coming up Millhouse. <laughs> Millhouse is my yeah. Just like think of some of the there's so many characters in that universe yeah. that they came up with. And that that are just iconic, and they're just fucking endless characters of like everyone knows their their Ralph Wiggum, like oh his catchphrase is like <laughs> I said that yesterday. I go, that's impossible. That's impossible. <laughs> I mean, Nothing gets chocolate out, <laughs> Wiggum. <laughs> See, <laughs> he's just gonna be chocolate stained on his police uniform. 
I oh. think I think that's an incredible list. That's 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 twenty right there. That I think any of those could be a, a mini bite someday in the future, oh, which yeah, is how dude. important a lot of those are. So yeah, most definitely, man. Hell of a list, everybody. Yeah. Uh, thanks for being here, everybody. We got a lot coming up. We got uh, next week coming up here. Actually, shortly you're gonna hear Twister. And then we are jumping into Summer of 70s. Let's go. Let's do Let's it. Go. I can't wait. Summer it's, of 70s was great last year. Yes, it was. And we are back in it. And we are starting with Rocky. We also got a voicemail. Call us. Leave us your thoughts. Tell us your favorite cartoons, animated series. Do it. 319-804-9596. Here's somebody from today who I don't know who it is. <laughs> hey, guys. This is Jim from London, Ontario, Canada. Called you guys a couple times. I'm just trying to keep, keep trying to get on. I uh, I just started listening to the Goosebumps podcast right now, and you guys were uh, there was some drunk chick that called, saying how she didn't remember. Uh, I'm calling right now because I'm just starting up my fire, and I'm just chilling with myself. My girlfriend went out to get some drinks, just chilling, and uh, it is the best way, just having a fire and uh, listening to you guys. Uh, all you guys, I I wanted to say I think I uh, relate most to Sean because I'm metalhead and I also love that. horror. Uh, but then I got to say, AJ, your laugh is. Just the best. I, I love it. It's so endearing. <laughs> and Mike, you're like the older brother. Uh, that's, that's all I got to say. You guys about are that. just the greatest group. <laughs> Keep up the good work. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Uh, oh man, fucking movie review. Ooh, I couldn't even think one off the top of my head. I wasn't thinking that far ahead. Shart. Shart. Uh, <laughs> I'll call back again. See you guys. <laughs> Keep up the good work. I love he's like, dude, Sean, me and you would get along. I love horror. I love metal. AJ, dude, you're so funny. Mike, you're like the older brother. Anyway, uh, I, love you guys. <laughs> I love you guys. He's got to get back everybody's to his fire, the, man. Everybody's got their roles, you know what I mean? <laughs> you only have a, a little, bit, little bit of time to give a call, you know? you got to get That's back right. to your fire and start drinking. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah, we love all you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, we are going to take us out on the mask theme song. That's what I've been prepping for. Okay. I like this that. is because it's... If like if I told you this was like the Midnight's new song, you'd be like, that's fucking tight. <laughs> but it's not. We love you all. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Goodbye. Thanks, Jim. Thanks for calling in, Jim. Jam. Mom, mask. it's mask time. Mom, mask is on. Leave me alone. Oh. Mom, 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 mask, mask. <laughs>